Network Africa. We do apologize for starting a little late. Uh, it was due to some technical issues, but let's get started with the program coming up today. Embattled President Jacob Zuma faces vote of no confidence from leaders of his own party, the ANC. The UN's Children's Agency, UNICEF, says the extent of nutrition problems faced in IDP camps is becoming clearer as more areas become accessible to humanitarian assistance. And the Aga Khan Award for Architecture Prize shortlists a Nigerian architect, Kunle Adeyemi. We start off the program with a wrap up of the weekend's events. People have been killed and 16 injured after a car bomb exploded in a marketplace in Mogadishu, Somalia. Presently, no group has claimed the responsibility, but many believe Islamist militant group Al Shabaab is behind the attack. Despite being ousted from most of its key strongholds in south and central Somalia, the Islamist group continues to launch deadly guerrilla attacks against the Somali government and foreign troops. Police in western Uganda have arrested the king of Wenzururu, Charles Wesley Mumbere, over clashes between police and militia, which killed at least 55 people. He is accused of inciting violence after militia men reportedly attacked a police post in his hometown of Kasese. At least 14 police officers and 41 militants have died in the clashes. Security forces stormed his palace amid claims he was harboring fighters. The king has denied any involvement. A group of international pilots taking part in a vintage plane rally landed in Kenya. 72-year-old British pilot Maurice Kirk, who was reported to have been found after going missing, was not among the returning pilots. Organizers say they are trying to track him down. The pilot flew in from Ethiopia on Thursday, where they had been detained for two days for crossing illegally into the country. The aviators are traveling the length of Africa using biplanes built between the 1920s and 1940s. President Jacob Zuma is facing what could be the toughest battle of his career yet after one of his own ministers tabled a vote of no confidence on him. A meeting of the governing party ANC's top brass has been extended to consider the proposal by the tourism minister, Derek Hanekam, for the leader to step down. Although President Zuma has faced challenges to step down in the past, this latest motion is coming from one of his own. Mr. Hanekom made this known at a gathering of the National Executive Committee, the ANC's top brass, and the only body which can remove him. A leadership contest is not expected until this time next year. Well, a number of families who fled their homes to escape Boko Haram attacks are cautiously trying to rebuild their lives after the Nigerian army, backed by its neighbors, recaptured most territories previously lost to the militants. Now, the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF, says the extent of the nutrition problems faced by children in IDP camps is becoming more clear as more areas become accessible for humanitarian assistance. Meanwhile, according to a report, by the internally displaced monitoring center. Nigeria has 3.3 million persons displaced by conflict, the highest number in Africa. Less than three kilometers from the Cameroon border lies Banki town in Nigeria's northeast Borno state. The town's main street, once a thriving commercial area with cross border trade, is now deserted and lined with buildings vandalized during the conflict. Islamist group Boko Haram captured the border town in September 2014. Banki's location was strategic for the militants as they attempted to secure territories beyond northeast Nigeria. Boko Haram controlled a swath of land in the region at the start of 2015, but Nigeria's army, aided by troops from neighboring countries, has recaptured most of the territories. With the return of some sense of security, former residents and displaced citizens from surrounding villages have now sought refuge in Banki. 
Aid agencies estimate that at least 20,000 displaced people now live there in semi-destroyed buildings. Most don't have roofs and the walls still bear scars of battle. In some houses, groups of affected women are pulling resources in the so-called widow houses. Many of them got separated from their husbands during the conflict. Some of the men were kidnapped or killed by Boko Haram. The women are trying to rebuild their lives by running in small businesses like tailoring and grocery stores to help feed their families. At a UNICEF-run health clinic in the government's girls' camp in Monguno, health workers who are screening children for malnutrition say they have recorded increasing cases of malnutrition. Affected children are put on treatment and given food supplements to help them get better. About 80,000 cases of severe acute malnutrition have already been recorded in the region. The moment and uh, the critical urgent gap we see in all the IDB camps is the availability of food. And the people could not cultivate in the last two years. Still, they don't have access to their cultivation areas. And there is no all livelihoods have been lost. And that's where we see a high rate of malnutrition. A seven-year insurgency to create an Islamic state in northeast Nigeria has killed about 15,000 people. Nigeria is fighting the group on the ground and with airstrikes. A multinational joint tax force comprising troops from Nigeria, neighboring Niger, Cameroon, Chad and Bene is also battling the militants. Let's get more on this issue of uh, displaced uh, people, especially children, and joining us to discuss uh, this problem is a counsellor uh, with a family and relationship for Doctors' Health uh, Initiative, Harriet Ogwebine. Thank you so much for joining us on oh, the program. Thank you for having me. <laughs> right. It's, it's a huge problem. Yeah, it is. The IDV camps, mm -hmm. you know, we've had this problem, you know, for a long time since, mm -hmm. you know, the people have been displaced. You know, let's start by saying, you know, how huge is this problem anyway we've heard from the government side we've yeah. heard from UNICEF we've heard from so many people but you know how huge is the okay, problem really? it is